starting in the 1950s when I was covering Southeast Asia, first for Time and Life magazines, later the Saturday Evening Post, later the uh, Washington Post, I used to go to Cambodia. Now, Cambodia seemed like a kind of, kind of oasis of peace next to Vietnam where the war was building up. And the most, uh, the, the most fascinating person in, in Cambodia was the chief of state, the king. He didn't call himself king, he called himself prince, uh, Sihanouk. Uh, Sihanouk was a funny, roly-poly kind of guy. Uh, and a lot of the American papers would make fun of him. Uh, because he was very fastidious and he danced around and, and sometimes they referred to him as Snooky. These things were unfair. He was really a very intelligent guy. Uh, he, was, he wrote symphony orchestras, he made movies. The movies were tediously dull, but nevertheless he made them. Uh, he subsidized the uh, ballet produ productions and whatnot. So I used to see him quite a bit and listen to him uh, talk about Cambodia. Now, he was very worried about the future of Cambodia um, because here it was on the one hand flanked by Vietnam and uh, historically the Vietnamese had gone in there to take it over and the other side the Thais and what saved him was the French came in and saved him from the two predatory uh, neighbors so he loved French, he just, and he spoke very good French, and he used to go to France all the time. He was a very tubby guy, so he would go to have his cure, as he called it, you know, to to the Ritz or the French Riviera. And, uh, and so he, there he was, trying to keep, keep himself going. And uh, I got to know him. He was extremely nice, and we were, when I was working for the Washington Post, we, had, we took a different stance and uh, tended to be sympathized with him and the fact that he's caught between these two uh, countries. Now, in order, to, in order to protect himself, one of the things he did was he, he invited all kinds of celebrities to Cambodia. Uh, Jackie Kennedy, uh, Catherine Deneuve, uh, Marcel Mastriano, and what not. The biggest guest he once had was General de Gaulle. Again, de Gaulle being French and seeing a worship de Gaulle. So de Gaulle came and that's one of the things. I used to cover these trips. I remember, I remember covering uh, Jackie Kennedy when she went there. And uh, <coughs> I remember uh, getting, getting to see it to, uh, to, um, to Phnom Penh when she arrived. And uh, so I, she gets off the plane and I'm running notes and something. So I turned to one of the journalists there, he happened to be a reporter for Women's Wear Daily. So uh, I said to him, tell me something, what is she wearing? He said, oh, she's wearing a witty pebble weave fabric with matching accessories. And we gave this kind of nonsense. Anyway, so she came and uh, Lee Radziwick, her sister came. And but the goal, the, the goal trip was really phenomenal because they had the trip at this great complex of temples at Angkor. And they had everything. They had elephants with uh, gilded tusks and they had dancing girls and guys on motor motorcycles and so forth. And it was really one of those, it was like one of those, those things they used to have in France, Sonne et Lumière, you know, the tremendous light and music and, and so forth. So I used to like to go there, and uh, then uh, there were some of his associates in 1970 who decided to overthrow him. He was away in France having his cure, and they ousted him. Now he should have come back. He could have taken the situation in hand. I happened to be there when, when this happened, and he made a mistake by not coming back. Instead, he rushed off to China and the Soviet Union, hoping that they would, they would uh, take care of him, which was a mistake. 
So then what happens to Cambodia is he's gone and then you have these lunatics called the Khmer Rouge come in and take over. And these are guys, strange, weird guys, this the Khmer Rouge, were actually, they were, a lot of them were quite intelligent. Uh, a lot of them came from upper class families. Uh, but they were, they were, their plan was to turn Cambodia into a kind of rural, uh, pastoral, uh, what do you want to call it, uh, country, countryside, and they proceeded to kill millions of people, more than a million people. So, uh, and friends of mine, journalists who had gone there, not realizing what they were in for, ended up being killed. Uh, one guy who was a neighbor of ours in Hong Kong, uh, Wells Hanga was killed. So, those were the horrible things that happened. Errol Flynn's son was killed. Stupidly, he was driving around on a motorcycle. So, fortunately, I didn't. I survived all those things. 